How's it going, guys? Past level question, renal pathology step one. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, MHLMA underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 41 year old man, three week history, occasional dark urine. He also reports having coughed up speed and with the blood with blood about a week ago. Past medical history on remarkable head and neck examination showed no abnormalities. Takes no medications. Renal biopsy from a similar patient is shown, which the following most likely be seen as patient. And then We've got this immunofluorescence here, okay, green color. I'll explain this as we move through the question. Choice A, antibodies against basal membranes, correct answer. Diagnosis, good pasture syndrome, which is going to be 234, 234. Good pasture is marching through the field, 234. Type 2 hypersensitivity against the alpha 3 chains of type 4 collagen, okay? So type 4 collagen composes basement membranes. So these are also known as anti-GBM, anti gbm anti uh, anti-GVM antibodies or anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies and we get this linear immunofluorescence, okay? And even if you say, no idea what I'm fucking looking at, I agree with you, but it's pretty rare for a USMLE question just to show you these green immunofluorescence images, okay? So if they do, especially in a male 20s to 40s, you should be thinking good pasture, okay? Good pasture, male 20s to 40s with hemoptysis and hematuria, and that's basically it. Okay, anti-GBM antibodies, linear immunofluorescence because basement membranes, type 4 collagen. Well, basement membranes are linear, aren't they? So basement membranes also in the lungs, okay? So if they give you the same fucking patient, let's say 40-year-old dude with hemoptysis, hematuria, they don't show you the immunofluorescence, but then they say head-itis, quote-unquote, colloquially, mastoiditis, sinusitis, otitis, nasal septal perforation, that's going to be Wegener granulomatosis, aka granulomatosis polyangiitis. That's going to be C anca, which would be anti proteinase 3 antibodies, which is choice B in the wrong fucking answer. Okay, so, you know, you'd be looking for head itis, as I said, very high yield for Wegener granulomatosis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, collagen 4, G mutation, wrong fucking answer, refers to Alport syndrome. So, Alport syndrome, X linked recessive. Some students say, OMG, is an excellent dominant? No, it's not. Okay, I mean, literature will say different things, but I can tell you on offline, NBME 18 or 19, one of those forms, uh, they say in the vignette, they say a uh, 28-year-old dude has uh, an excellent recessive disorder, and you need to know that it's going to be an eye and or ear problem plus red urine. That's how Alport presents, okay? So they can give you 12-year-old, 28-year-old, doesn't matter. It's going to be a male, and they'll say that there will be like blurry vision, some sort of eye problem or an ear problem. Okay, you have stereocilia uh, in the in the ear that require type four collagen. So eye or ear problem plus red urine, that's Alport syndrome. That's a gene mutation type four collagen, holy shit, okay? So your two type four collagen conditions, you got Alport, which is the gene mutation, and then you've got good pasture syndrome, which is your uh, type two hypersensitivity against the alpha three chains type four collagen antibodies, anti-GBM antibodies. So. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, focal cemental glomerular sclerosis. Wrong fucking answer. So overrated condition, fairly low yield for US simile. This will be the answer for nephrotic syndrome and sickle cell. So I've said uh, sickle cell plus nephrotic syndrome, no blood in the urine. Answer equals FSGS. Sickle cell plus dark urine, blood in the urine. That's going to be renal papillary necrosis, choice C, okay? There are other causes of FSGS. Uh, there's a heroin-induced nephropathy question. Okay, so HIV slash heroin use uh, can cause FSGS. There are other causes, uh, interferon use, etc. Haven't fucking seen them assessed. I would say FSGS, uh, as I'll reiterate, is just going to be nephrotic syndrome and sickle cell, and it can be um, IV drug use slash heroin use. And you could be aware that it doesn't respond to steroids quite as well as minimal change disease. Okay, and then. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, renal papillary necrosis, as I said, wrong fucking answer. So dark urine in sickle cell. Okay, so the renal papillae, uh, the medulla of the kidney receives fractionally lower blood flow. A little bit confusing because uh, chronic NSAID use can cause renal papillary necrosis, slothing of the renal papillae due to chronic uh, subacute or chronic ischemia. And then we said sickle cell microinfarcts within the renal papillae. I've even seen a question where an infection can lead to renal papillary necrosis, dark urine, okay? But I say it's a little bit confusing because tangentially you need to know that uh, it's actually the PCT of the kidney that's most susceptible to acute 
anoxic injury because of the high concentration of ATPase transporters that have high oxygen demand. So they want you to know that you can get cellular swelling. If there's decreased ATP, sodium builds up in the cell, water stays with sodium, you get swelling of the PCT cells. The PCT of the kidney, acute tubular necrosis, okay? So PCT of the kidney, most susceptible to acute anoxic slash hypoxic injury, but the renal papillae, that's more subacute to chronic, it can be NSAIDs, it can be a sickle cell if you do have microinfarcts or even rarely infections. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal makes you make more content if you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.